Thanks everybody for joining the Save the Frogs World Summit. I am Dr. Kerry Krieger, founder of Save the Frogs. I'm gonna be giving a presentation for it looks like I have 22 minutes right now, 25 minutes, uh, talking about 10 years of saving frogs. I'm gonna be talking about our various campaigns that we've had and successes that we have had throughout the years. The 10th annual Save the Frogs Day and over the past decade, Save the Frog staff and volunteers have held uh, about 1,300 Save the Frogs Day events, 1,300 known Save the Frogs Day events. There's probably many more that people never registered or informed us about. So whatever the case is, many, many events in at least 57 countries to raise awareness of the problems that amphibians face and do something positive for amphibians all around the world. So this is the Save the Frogs World Summit. We have presentations that are going to be happening, um, about 10 hours worth of presentations over the next 26 hours or so. So uh, we set this up so that whatever people's time zones are, wherever they are in the world, they are able to log in. So I hope that you will join us for as much as you can. We have presenters from Ghana, Australia, Bangladesh, Nepal, USA, and I'm probably leaving something out, someone out. So just try to uh, stick around. So right now I'm we'll be talking about 10 years of saving frogs. And first I wanna put out a huge thank you to everybody who has ever contributed financially to save the frogs and everyone who's ever contributed their time and energy and volunteerism. This slide specifically dedicated to all the donors, over $1,200,000 raised since 2008. And while not enough to save every frog on the planet, that's been enough to get a whole lot done for amphibians. And so I send a huge thank you and I encourage everybody watching to donate. This is, at least tomorrow is, the 10th annual Save the Frogs Day. I can't think of a better time to donate to Save the Frogs. So we appreciate all your support in the past and going forward. Now I started Save the Frogs because I like nature personally. I enjoy nature. I enjoy being in nature. I like wildlife. I also like the positive things that having healthy ecosystems do for humans. And in particular, frogs, not only do I like them because they're really awesome animals and they do a lot to serve us by eating mosquitoes, flies, ticks, providing us with medical advances, uh, keeping our waterways clean, serving as food for other wildlife species and on top of all of that, the reason in particular that I decided to focus my environmental efforts on amphibians is because they're the most endangered group of animals on the planet. Well over 2,000 amphibian species threatened with extinction. About a couple hundred species completely extinct in recent decades, an extinction rate several thousand times faster than it should be. Successful amphibian conservation is comprised of four distinct realms. When I started Save the Frogs, almost all amphibian conservation was restricted to one of those four realms, which struck me as problematic. The first realm was science. When I started Save the Frogs, almost all amphibian conservation was restricted to the sciences, to academia, to the acquisition of knowledge related to amphibian biology and ecology, an important facet of amphibian conservation, but not the only one. So I started Save the Frogs in part to fill in the gaps of what was missing and what was needed in the world of amphibian conservation, including education, which I consider the basis, the root, of all successful environmental conservation. Nothing happens without educated people, without people who are inspired to take action 
without people being empowered and having the tools and the knowledge to go out there and make a difference in whatever they want to do for the environment. So this has been educating, inspiring, empowering students, politicians, professors, and corporations. Getting legislation in place, enforcing existent legislation, regulations to protect amphibians. And of course, amphibians need a place to live. They need their habitats protected, restored, and where there is no habitat anymore to create habitat for them. So that's been the primary focus of Save the Frogs, those four realms of amphibian conservation. And I'm pleased to announce that Save the Frogs has dispersed $81,702 to amphibian conservationists in 15 countries, including $2,500 that we just sent out this week to support events that are happening this week for Save the Frogs Day. So to go through some of our um, multitude of successes, starting in California where Save the Frogs has been based since 2010, um, through our campaigning and awareness efforts, we helped get the California tiger salamander recognized as endangered by the state of California, the department of then um, fish and game now fish and wildlife that one with a three to two vote after hundreds of letters were sent in in support of that by say the frog supporters so three to two vote that always struck me as important that everybody's voice counts and um, it takes a lot of people effort to make people sway and sometimes you're only a vote away from environmental success or failure Non-native trout are a primary threat to California's montane amphibians, as well as many amphibians around the world, especially that live in mountains where trout are planted by humans in places where they do not belong. So in the early days of Save the Frogs, we had um, over 700 letters sent into the National Park Service that comprised over 95% of the public comments they received. They received so many public comments from Save the Frog supporters, they had to hire outside assistants to help them deal with all those comments, eventually led them to deciding to remove non-native fish from 60 water bodies in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. That effort is ongoing. It took them about six or seven years to actually start the work after they decided that they were going to do it, but it's going on now. Save the Frogs Day was one of the first things that I did when I started Save the Frogs was to start a day dedicated to amphibians because I thought that would be a great way to get teachers and politicians involved. So as I said, there's been well over a thousand events that have taken place around the world over the past 10 years. All types of events. We've had rallies in Washington, D.C call for a federal ban on the use and production of atrazine, an herbicide that can turn male frogs into females at less than three parts per billion. Most commonly detected pesticide in US groundwater, rainwater, and tap water. I've been to the EPA three separate occasions to talk to their scientists about the problems with atrazine. A lot of scientists taking people out to show them frogs in their native habitats on Save the Frogs Day, introduce them to their frogs, educate students about frogs, get students interested in frogs, get students drawing frog art on Save the Frogs Day. We've had lots of kids such as Avalon who started saving frogs when she was nine or 10 holding Save the Frogs events National seminars on frogs, a lot of activity in Nepal, India, Bangladesh. This is South Korea at the site where they helped protect a wetland that was scheduled to be destroyed. The government had planned to build apartment buildings on it. Those people protected that wetland. Students in Africa, we've had 5K events 
in Seattle to raise awareness of amphibians, raise funds for amphibian conservation. We've gotten partnership from many organizations around the world, including some of the world's largest environmental organizations, such as the National Wildlife Federation, Ranger Rick, and with the help of the National Park Service and many land management agencies in the United States and around the world. Lots of activity in Bangladesh. In about an hour, I'll be giving a separate presentation all about our efforts in India and Bangladesh. So please tune into that. I've got tons of awesome photos from India and Bangladesh from my recent trips there, saving frogs. Pakistan, um, girl group going out to help save the frogs. As I said, a lot of activity in India and Nepal. A group in Nigeria, this was funded by a Save the Frogs Award. And also scientific activities, students, undergraduates going out to sample for chytrid fungus and learn all about chytrid fungus and their local frogs and collect data. Save the Frogs Day has been featured by some of the world's largest um, journalism sources such as Le Monde front page in France where they have eaten so many frogs it's illegal now to eat a native frog because they ate most of their native frogs. CNN Worldwide TV two minute television spot and official Save the Frogs Day proclamations in many states and cities. I've given over 375 presentations, live presentations reaching at least 21,000 actual participants. This is one of the best ways to get people interested in amphibians. This includes a lot of efforts in schools, especially in California, but all around the world. And this school in rural Southern California helped to get the California red-legged frog listed as the state amphibian signed into law by Governor Jerry Brown. So a lot of kids taking part in Save the Frogs. We help protect Fowler's toads at Lake Erie, one of Canada's last three populations. Developers were going to build on that land and about three or four years ago, they canceled that project. Save the Frogs had led a Save the Frogs Academy course in which students um, helped to raise awareness of that issue. It became so controversial, the developers could not sell the apartment complex, the apartment units in advance, so they canceled the project and that habitat remains to this day. We got the city of San Francisco to uh, abandon a project that would have harmed foothill yellow-legged frogs We've gotten legislation in place in the city and county of Santa Cruz to keep bullfrogs out of California. Unfortunately, the state, while they have acknowledged in recent years that the importation of millions of bullfrogs legally into the state causes problems, they have yet to take action on a statewide level. We've encouraged, inspired, and educated a lot of people about building ponds and gotten many people, including schools, to build ponds. This was the winner of our Build a Frog Pond contest back in perhaps 2011. Frog pond built by a school in Columbia that had two frog species calling when I visited. We've partnered with federal and state agencies to build frog habitat. This was for California red-legged frogs, which had not been seen in this forest in decades, but they were seen within one year of us building about 10 ponds on that property. We've visited many schools to build ponds, gotten lots of students involved. It's fabulous education for the students, gets them outside, gets them physically active, gets them using their mathematical skills to build the wetlands, and they end up with frog habitat on their school grounds. This school right here we built six small wetlands 
over the course of two days involving about 700 students and teachers. Um, big thanks to Pavan Raj Gowda, who helped raise $4,400 for that project when he was 15 years old. Green Kids Now is his organization. Go check that out. And Amanda Cooper right here helped out building those wetlands. She will be speaking, I believe, tomorrow, about 24 hours from now, specifically about how kids can get active and make a difference saving frogs. She has done fundraising. She was the youngest um, participant in the Save the Frogs 90-day challenge, and she's run lots of educational tables at public events for the amphibians. It's a pond we built in one day at a high school. It's what it looked like a month or two later. This habitat hosts three different endangered amphibians. Tomorrow I will be talking a lot about Save the Frogs Ghana. I have a presentation happening around noon U.S. Eastern time. I don't know if that's precise, but sometime around noon. Just to let you know, savethefrogs.com slash summit has all the schedule for these talks, go check that out. So Ghana has been our most active um, international branch, in part thanks to Gilbert Adam, co-founder of Save the Frogs Ghana, as well as many volunteers throughout the country helping us protect one of the world's most endangered species, the giant squeaker frog. Only 13 individuals were known to exist. I need to update that slide, because currently there's at least 28 We've planted about 15,000 trees to reforest their habitats with help from the local villages and a whole lot of volunteers helping out saving frogs. Actually, the original, the inaugural Save the Frogs World Summit took place in 2016 at KNUST University in Kumasi, Ghana. We had talks go all day long about amphibians. And another of the frogs we work to protect in Ghana, Togo Slippery Frog, um, their habitat is threatened by mining, but the frogs are still going strong. We've been campaigning in that region. So I'll be going into a lot more depth about Ghana tomorrow. This is Gilbert. In the background is the SUI Amphibian Conservation Education Center essentially a Save the Frogs education center into which we stocked computers, books, and have educational efforts going on. This village is surrounded by rainforest that hosts 30 amphibian species. Gilbert and I were um, inducted as chiefs in the village of Ya Chrome, and that is assisting our efforts in the community as those communities, integrating those communities into amphibian conservation is incredibly important. A lot of our efforts have focused in Latin America because Latin America is home to the world's greatest biodiversity of amphibians as well as the world's highest number of endangered species. Um, some of these countries have large numbers of amphibians. Colombia, probably 800 known amphibians by now in a place much smaller than America, which has about 300 known amphibians. So lots of biodiversity, lots of threats, fortunately lots of people interested in amphibians. And so I have given presentations at many universities throughout Latin America, getting a lot of people involved and interested in amphibians. Group of undergraduates we've sent grants to in the past to go out to villages where People are illegally collecting poison dart frogs to be sold into the pet trade. So they go out there, educate the kids who spread the word in their communities. We have events going on in Paraguay. Right now, there's a 
Save the Frogs event happening down there. I also took a trip to South Korea, represented the USA in Korea's first international amphibian symposium, met up with four different nonprofits to discuss their amphibian issues. We have helped support communities in parts of the world where ecotourism is the primary method of protecting rainforests. Our ecotours have contributed at least $50,000 to local communities and educated over 100 ecotourists since 2013 about amphibians, many who've gone on to become volunteers of Save the Frogs. We've had ecotours in Belize, Peru, Ecuador, and Costa Rica. Costa Rica Eco Tour taking place this July. Another Ecuador one happening in June. We have one space remaining, June 14th to 25th. So if you want to find lots of frogs in Ecuador, send me a line. Many years ago, I sent a letter to a restaurant in San Francisco informing them about the problems of the frog legs they were serving specifically. They were wild caught Florida pig frogs and that restaurant stopped serving pig frogs. We've gotten several restaurants as well as 76 or so supermarkets to stop serving frog legs. Wegmans in particular, thank you to Wegmans, huge grocery chain in the Northeastern United States. We've had frog legs protests Uncle Julio's Rio Grande Mexican restaurant, to the best of my knowledge, is no longer serving frog legs. I'd like to think that our multitude of protests at their restaurants, letters written to them, educational um, cards distributed, contributed to their decision to stop serving frog legs. And hopefully these kids who came out to protest are doing great things for the environment. We helped save the Hochstetter's frog. Our supporters sent 1,250 plus letters to the New Zealand government to tell them not to mine in the habitat of the Hochstetter's or the Archie's frog. Archie's frog, the edge number one amphibian, most evolutionarily distinct and globally endangered, according to their survey, was under threat and the New Zealand government stopped that, abandoned that mining project. You'll hear a lot of mention of mining, mines. Now that's generally outside of our day-to-day -day life, at least we think it is, but if we look around at the things we wear, the things we use, the things we build from, a lot of it comes from mining. Mining has a huge negative impact on the environment. So what that says is reduce your consumption, choose what you buy with some thought, recycle what you can, reuse what you can. Mountain yellow-legged frogs. Over 2,000 letters sent to the National Park Service and the California Fish and Game Commission helping to get these frogs critical habitat, endangered species protections, fish removed from their habitats as I discussed earlier. Prohibido transportar, it's prohibited to transport 201 salamander species into the USA or across state lines now as of maybe a year and a half ago, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service classified 201 salamander species under the Lacey Act in order to prevent the entry and spread of Batrachochytrium salamandrivorans, a salamander chytrid fungus that's causing die-offs of amphibians in Europe. Most likely, those amphibians got that disease from amphibians shipped intercontinentally for use as pets. There's a huge pet trade. There's a bait trade. There's a frog legs trade, laboratory animals trade, zoo trade, 
of amphibians, five primary reasons amphibians are getting shipped around the world, usually with no disease controls or quarantines. Sick amphibian or the water it was held in gets let out into the wild, released, spreads their disease to native, naive populations that can completely die, go extinct. Perhaps the entire species, let's not have that happen. Best way to prevent that is to stop shipping amphibians. Don't engage in the commerce of amphibians. Save the Frogs has provided training for scientists. If you go to savethefrogs.com slash QPCR, you can see that I put up my entire detailed laboratory protocol for how to detect the chytrid fungus, Petraca chytrium dendrobatitis on amphibians, been downloaded and used by many scientists around the world, including in Panama, where I gave a five-day course to 25 Latin American biologists, and I have gone to captive breeding facilities in Panama that have been using that protocol for many years and have successfully prevented chytrid outbreaks in their captive breeding facilities. Save the Frogs help get the word out, get people thinking about the potential negative side of pet ownership with respect to amphibians. The number, we'll say three issues being, some of these frogs are being taken from the wild. Some of them are being transported with their diseases and released into the wild where they eat native frogs, compete with native frogs, spread their diseases to native frogs. Some of them are just kept in a very small tank where there are ethical issues and pet amphibians have a high rate of premature death because they are very difficult to keep in small containers. They like being wild and free. So don't purchase wild caught amphibians. About 18 states in the USA have laws in place that say a student has the right to opt out of dissection. So if you or your child or a student you know says, oh, dissections are coming up, you can say, hey, look up and see if you're in a state that allows you to opt out and then opt out. If you're not in a state that allows you to opt out, you can still talk to your teachers and Save the Frogs has helped get dissections out of at least 18 schools, giving them virtual dissection software in exchange for their agreement to end their dissection program. As I mentioned before, Dr. Krishan Kumar Sharma, Save the Frogs India president, has helped get dissections out of all schools and universities in India saving millions of frogs lives. What a simple way to protect amphibians, simply to stop dissecting them. Tesla Park, we've been involved in this campaign to protect Tesla Park from off-highway vehicles for perhaps five years. California has a department of off-highway motor vehicle recreation, something to that effect whose mission more or less is to create more land for off-highway vehicles, motorized vehicles, three-wheelers, four-wheelers, two-wheelers. And as you can see in this photo, that's problematic for the land. Tesla Park, there's been some positive um, events taking place recently, which is that California legislation is currently going through the assemblies and Senate to enable the state to sell that land. So if they could sell the land, then they could then take the money, do it, use that for whatever off-highway vehicle stuff they want to do, but not destroy this critical piece of property. So we've had lots of university involvement throughout the world, throughout the U.S., getting lots of students out holding events. Climate change 
savethefrogs.com slash climate. Gotten a lot of awareness for the amphibians in Yellowstone National Park, protected since 1872, but not protected from climate change. We've had this poster and posters like it up in Chicago O'Hare, Detroit Airport, Denver International, Orlando, John Wayne Airport, and several others for many years, probably educating hundreds of thousands of people who pass by these. This one is about 12 feet long. So a lot of people see these. Our art contest, Save the Frogs art contest, received over 15,000 entries from 66 countries, at least, around the world, getting lots of students educated about amphibians, about the threats to amphibians that you can see depicted here. Habitat destruction, pollution, pesticides, deformities, malformities, frog legs, dissections, pet frogs, climate change, global warming, invasive species, non-native species. California red-legged frog, official state amphibian of California, thanks to Seaview Elementary School, Salton City, the kids there, along with uh, their parents, teachers, superintendents, principals, myself and Michael Starkey all visited the state capitol to help get AB 2364 passed into law, signed by Governor Jerry Brown. Artwork, grand prize winner, probably 2013, Nick Gustafson, amazing frog artist. And a big thanks to Leah Klen, was 16 year old at the time, and she sent in this frog art to me, the very first piece of frog art I ever received, and she thought of the Save the Frogs art contest going on to educate tens of thousands of people around the world. Save the Frogs Poetry Contest, thousands of entries, 76 countries took part. And right now, this would be an opportune time for me to pull out, if I have it here, my Save the Frogs bookmark disappeared. Perhaps I gave it away, my final Save the Frogs bookmark. Anyway, I don't have it. I was going to recite a poem. I've read it so many times, I should be able to recite it from memory. Not sure I can, though, on the spot like this. Frogs. No, I can't do it. But I am, as I said before, going to work on turning the Little Book of Frog Poetry, Volume 1, into a uh, digital ebook deliver that to all members, Save the Frogs memberships, at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, Washington, D.C. time tonight. That's precisely um, five and a half hours from now, approximately. Um, I will be talking about the future of Save the Frogs, including Save the Frogs memberships, and I encourage every single one of you on here to become a Save the Frogs member Info cards, as I said before, we've probably distributed 50,000 plus of these info cards. They talk about why frogs are disappearing, threats to frogs, why they're important, ways to save frogs. Hopefully doing a good job educating people at our live events. Save the Frogs magazine. We had four or five editions maybe in print, 16 page magazine, great for giving out at events, and um, also PDFs. If you go to savethefrogs.com slash magazine, you should be able to, you should be able to download PDFs of that. And we also distributed thousands of posters. Hopefully a lot of these posters are gracing um, school and university walls to this date. I know that they are because sometimes I visit Save the Frog supporters 
laboratories and I notice the posters up in their labs and in their classrooms and maybe even in your houses. And I'll take this moment to thank all of the Save the Frogs graphic designers and artists who have ever contributed their work. This one, Frogs Are Disappearing, one of many amazing pieces of frog design done by Allison Lee, Save the Frogs volunteer. She made our logo. One of the questions I received earlier was, what's your favorite frog? That's my favorite frog, Southern Orange-Eyed Tree Frog. It's our logo frog, Latoria Chloris from Australia and on this Frogs Are Disappearing poster. So big thank you to Allison. So as I said, to, as when I started this whole uh, World Summit off this morning, thank you to the thousands, literally thousands of people who have contributed financially to support our efforts over the past decade, contributing at least one million, one point two million dollars to fund Save the Frogs. And I certainly appreciate your support. Tomorrow, April 28th, 2018, the 10th annual Save the Frogs Day. What better time to donate to Save the Frogs? Or I'll even say better than waiting until tomorrow. You can take this hour-long break right now. I would love to see some donations come in so that we can continue to educate people, educate you and others around the world and implement frog saving activities worldwide to benefit amphibians. Your support makes it possible. The more funds we have with which to work, the more we can get done. Savethefrogs.com. I'm sure all of you use it. I'm guessing every single one of you has been to Savethefrogs.com. I built Savethefrogs.com. It was actually the second Save the Frogs task I ever did after creating the Frogs of Australia poster, which I created first because I wanted something to sell on Savethefrogs.com once I got the website built to start raising funds. So I built the site 2008. I redid the site. Our site, we've had a new site since 2016. And right now, for the first time ever, we actually have a professional website developer building the third um, generation, we'll call it, the third version, V3 of SaveTheFrogs.com. So I assume that within a few weeks, we will have a brand new SaveTheFrogs.com better than ever and the brand new SaveTheFrogs.com will um, enable us to get the word out and to far more easily have volunteer website developers with a lot more skills than myself improving and managing and working on the site. To date, it's been pretty much exclusively just me doing all of our website work, but that is currently changing. Again, thank you to our Save the Frogs donors who've made it possible for me to get professional website development assistance. We have a Facebook group, savethefrogs.com slash Facebook. We'll get you there. Go join it if you're a Facebook user. If you're not a Facebook user, that's fine. What I'd like to do is get a uh, Save the Frogs community going on either our own site or through a Save the Frogs app one way or another. Hopefully that will come to be in the near future. I don't have set plans on that, but for now, good way to connect with other Save the Frog supporters, go to our Facebook group, savethefrogs.com slash Facebook. And let's take this upcoming lunch break or wherever you are in the world, dinner, breakfast, um, invite some of your friends to the World Summit, savethefrogs.com slash summit. They can go to that page, register there. They will get login info sent to them. And... Thank you for helping Save the Frogs. Thank you for attending the World Summit. Thank you for participating in the 10th annual Save the Frogs Day. Thank you to our photo contest participant who 
entered this photo. Thank you to Donna Towton for doing the graphic design right here. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right. How about let's take 10 total minutes for a Q&A discussion, and then we'll take an official break for an hour, and Michael Starkey will be on at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. United States Eastern Time. So anyone is welcome to turn on your videos. Can you imagine that? Turn on your video. And if you're out there and you want to uh, have an actual video conference, you're welcome to do that. If you want to talk, you can either chat and ask me to unmute you, or you can turn your video on, raise your hand. I can unmute you. Um, questions, comments, thoughts on how the day is going, thoughts on the presentations, thoughts on Save the Frogs. Do you just want to say who you are, where you are, why you care about frogs, anything of that nature? All right, here's a message from SDF. Maybe that's Save the Frogs Ehan or Stefihan. We love frogs. We want to help save the frogs. We are a third grade classroom. I'm curious, has your classroom been there watching these presentations? And do you want to turn your video on and show us what's going on in the classroom? Or unmute you and anyone from your classroom can say hi. If you want to, just let me know. We have Dr. Krishan Kumar Sharma on right now. He will be giving a presentation Coming up soon, 10.30 p.m., that's uh, in eight hours, Dr. Sharma from India will be giving a presentation. I also want to announce we have a uh, brand new presentation that's happening you may have not seen. I just added it to the schedule this morning. That is Jerry Marantelli, an amphibian conservation breeding specialist from Australia. He's been helping to raise... Um, corroboree frogs, very endangered frogs for well over a decade. And he will be speaking at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. That is five hours and 45 minutes from now. He'll be talking, I assume, about Australia, Australian frogs, and captive breeding of frogs for conservation purposes. Okay. All right. Thank you, um, I'm not sure what your name is, STF Ehan, and the third grade classroom. We appreciate you um, being here. If you want to chat in a message, chat in a question, Miss Feehan, thank you, thank you for being here. And if you, if your students have a question for me, go ahead and send that in. And if again, if anyone out there wants to turn on your videos or if you want to speak, then just let me know. All right, we have a uh, question, statement. Wondering if you can provide an update on the progress of attempting to solve the chytrid fungus issue. So I think from a scientific perspective, as far as solving it, or let's first um, define what solving the chytrid fungus issue is. I'd say let's break it into three, three components. We need to stop the spread of chytrid, at least human-caused spread. That means the 100 million amphibians that get shipped around the world each year for use as pets, food, laboratory, zoos, and bait. We need to stop shipping those frogs around the world so that they're not spreading chytrid fungus or other diseases. We need to be able to save a frog that's in our hand or in a laboratory so that we can cure a frog of its chytrid fungus, and we need to be able to cure wild populations or prevent the um, spread of chytrid within a given population out in the wild. We have been able to cure a frog of its chytrid for 10, 15 plus years. 
Not too much has been done to stop the intercontinental trade and transport of amphibians. There's still tens of millions plus, probably still a hundred million to the best estimate that I ever saw, frogs being transported intercontinentally for commercial purposes around the world each year. As I mentioned before, we did have the US FWS Lacey Act ruling on 201 salamander species, stopping them from entering the USA and from being inter, um, transported across state lines. So that's good. But worldwide, there's still huge amounts of commerce in amphibians and that will and does spread diseases around. As far as curing frogs in the wild population, which would be fantastic, I don't think there's been significant progress in that. Um, Jerry Marantelli from Australia, I'm guessing that he's possibly got some thoughts on that. So 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight, five hours or so from now, we'll be able to get his thoughts on it. And in a future, say the Frogs World Summit or webinar like this, I'd like to get someone who's um, currently involved in Kittred research to get their thoughts. But to the best of my knowledge, we can't, we still cannot cure a wild population of amphibians. There's billions of zoospores out in the wild, under the soil, in the water, on frogs, probably on other animals, on decaying materials, and the chytrid fungus, once it's out there in that population, we don't know how to get rid of it. And most of those frog populations that got wiped out in the mountains of, say, central in South America, they are very slow to recover. And most of those populations, if they survived and didn't go completely extinct, they're still having problems. The chytrid fungus is probably still there. And the time it takes for a amphibian to evolve and adapt to the chytrid fungus is simply um, too long because their generation time is for a frog to have a new generation of frogs, three, four, five, six, 10 years perhaps, and then they have to adapt and it would take several generations minimum to evolve defenses against the chytrid. Meanwhile, the other problems to the amphibians are ongoing. They have the chytrid problem. I know that where I visited El Valle in Panama, there's all kinds of habitat destruction going on there. That's a tourist destination and they're building houses there and all kinds of things. So that's on top of the chytrid problem. So I hope that shed light on the chytrid problem. We have a question from Miss Feehan and the third graders. How long have I been helping frogs? I have been involved in amphibian conservation since 2003 when I went to Queensland, Australia to Griffith University to pursue a PhD in environmental science, which was focused on the ecology of chytridiomycosis, a fungal disease that is causing problems for amphibians in Australia and mountainous regions throughout the world. And then in 2008, I founded Save the Frogs. And for the last 10 years, we have held over 2000 events worldwide to educate and other, educate people about amphibians, conserve their habitats, restore their habitats, and otherwise improve the world for humans, frogs, and other wildlife. What are some ways that kids can help frogs? Well, you are doing the um, right thing right now. The best thing anybody can do to improve the environment is to start out by educating themselves about the issues so that you understand what the issues are, that you know there's a problem, and you are educating yourself to be able to spread the message, the environmental message, inspire others to care about amphibians. There's two primary ways that we can save frogs. One is by improving our own ecological footprint, the way that we live our own personal lives. Each of us specifically consumes products. We buy food, we buy clothing, um, 
we choose how we're going to transport ourselves to places where we're going to live all of these things that we do and the things we consume and the things we buy have an impact on the planet so to reduce to reuse to recycle to think about what companies we support does the company care about the environment do the products are they heavily impacting the environment so that's the first thing to educate yourself about your own ecological footprint on savethefrogs.com we have tons of info you can go find our how to help page go type in how to help save the frogs you'll get our how to help page and there's lots of ideas on how to improve our ecological impact things such as slow down driving on wet nights don't use pesticides build a frog pond in your backyard so this is the second group of actions are what are the actions that we can take as humans as an organization to benefit amphibians outside of our own personal ecological footprint so those are things like building ponds restoring habitat perhaps your school has land and you can talk to your school board your administrators your principal the other teachers and build a frog pond and create habitat for amphibians turning off the tap so that you're not wasting water you're not wasting hot water that's often heated by a coal-fired power plant that has lots of associated pollution reduce reuse recycle use less plastic use rechargeable batteries vote for the environment get educated about who is running for office and even if you're not old enough to vote talk to your family members who are and say hey this politician doesn't care about the environment don't vote for them this politician does care about the environment vote for them that's a good start become an amphibian biologist or more generally speaking think about what career you are going to choose follow a career path of something that you care about ideally something that benefits the world so one thing is to go into environmental science environmental law environmental management or any type of business where you can <clears throat> pursue something ecologically better than what has happened in the past you could raise a lot of money through your school through say selling whatever kind of bake sale items you want or any other way that your school um, and your um, students wish to raise funds for save the frogs and donate it to save the frogs and we could use it to save the frogs that would be incredible you can eat locally grown food that was not shipped from far away which uses up fuel and contributes to global warming so eat locally grown food eat organic food that was not sprayed with pesticides you can continually educate yourself at savethefrogs.com where we have tons of info you can continue to join these types of events you could even schedule me to speak to your students about frogs spread the word to your local teachers about save the frogs <clears throat> excuse me organize the save the frogs day event the last saturday of april each year those were ways to save the frogs i hope that was helpful thank you uh, miss feehan for being here and good luck with all your students let's uh take this one last thought All right, coming to us from Catalonia in eastern Spain, where I have spoken before at the University of Lleida, though that's not in Catalan, nearby though. We're a nonprofit that works for amphibians and reptile conservation research education. I love amphibians, I think they're amazing. Sadly, they're endangered. That's why I'm working on amphibian conservation. All right, with a link to find out about your group. Thank you. Please share the save the frogs day message with your group and we are happy to um, have you assisting with amphibian conservation 
Okay, so we have precisely 63 minutes before Michael Starkey takes over. Let's all take a break. I hope to see you back here. If you want, you're welcome to just leave your um, video conferencing software Zoom running. I think that we're just going to leave this on. I may put on a cool background, but we will reconvene in one hour. Thank you all so much for saving the frogs. If you want, spread the word, savethefrogs.com slash summit. Get some other people on the line. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this uh, first session, three and a half straight hours talking about frogs. All right, see you all soon.